A warm welcome to all my lovely audience of IC Tales. Today I have a beautiful lady on my left, Miss Natasha. She has a passion for wellness and fitness, so join me in warmly welcoming her. Hi ma'am, how are you? How was your day? And tell us something about yourself. Hi, um, I'm good. It's been a busy day. It's a Friday, so you know, wrapping up all of our week calls. Uh, but otherwise, it's been a good day. I'm looking forward to our interview and then a relaxing weekend ahead. Yes, likewise, ma'am. So <clears> I think we should get this started because I really want to see how this goes. With your permission, <laughs> can we get started? Yes, sure, of course. Right. So let's just start by getting to know each other. So tell us something about your passion towards wellness and why did you exactly choose it as your career? Right. So, um, you know, I've, I've actually said this before. I feel like uh, I feel like this has chosen me. I didn't think, you know, that, you know, this is definitely something a path I would be like. Although my first job was definitely in the fitness industry, I didn't think it would, you know, uh, it would grow into where we are today. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, I think, I think what my passion is, is definitely uh, being able to use my strengths. You know, what I love about being here in this role is that, of course, this role allows me to use my strengths to the best mm -hmm. of its capacity. And, uh, and the passion that comes through it is, you know, when, our, our clients come back to us with great feedback and great testimonials. And, you know, you've heard about somebody, you know, since we're dealing with people with medical conditions, uh, when you get a feedback from someone saying, oh, I've been on medication for the last, you know, two years. And then they'll send you a picture of their bin full of, you know, the, the medicines that they're now chucked out because they don't need it anymore. Right. So when you hear back from people about how we've been able to help them, how the team has done such a great job, uh, you know, in in correcting some of their medical conditions that just makes everything really meaningful right and i'm very happy to know that you chose this as your career and you're doing great uh, at this field so a great job on that ma'am and let's move on to something thank you thank you so much right so let's move on to something more interesting i also noticed in your profile that you have worked as an aerobics instructor so what is the importance right. of physical training with this aspect and what is the relevance of it with mental wellness so for me as an individual, if you ask me personally, uh, physical training is for my mental wellness. You know, while, while I, I do my fair share of, you know, um, weight training and, you know, it, it helps you with, you know, building your muscles and, and toning up. And uh, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, you have yoga, you have breathing, you have so many other aspects to it. But for me as an individual, it is definitely about my mental wellness. Nothing mm -hmm. makes me happier than you know, uh, a good run with some music, you know, I love going on my walks, listening to music. I love that, you know, uh, that boost of energy I get mm -hmm. when I've had a great workout. For example, mm -hmm. yesterday, I was really tired. Uh, and in the evening, I had a badminton game. And then my trainer made me climb up 13 stories mm -hmm. home. He was like, no, you need to walk up the stairs. And while I was so tired at the end of it, I was just so full of energy. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, now I'm ready for the evening. So for me, uh, you know, uh, physical wellness really is about my mental wellness. I think, I think it takes me to a happy place. You know, it gives me all the happy hormones that get created when you do a good exercise. So for me, they're both very interlinked. I don't really think, I, I don't think it's just, you know, one or the other. I mm -hmm. think they definitely support, you know, each other. Right. And, I and I'm glad to see that there's a balance <coughs> in uh, both of them. So great job on your insights on that one. Um, Ma'am, is your video getting uh, on and off? Sorry, yeah, it's just a network issue, yeah. No issues, ma'am, we'll crop that off. Let's move on to our next question. So you have your venture called LCHHS. Tell us something about that and how did all this begin? Okay, so uh, yes, Lou Coutinho Holistic Healing System is a very long name. Uh, we call ourselves Team Luke. So whenever we mm -hmm. refer to us in conversation, because uh, it's such a long name, we say we work with Team Luke. Uh, how did this begin? This all began with Luke's vision multiple years ago. You mm -hmm. know, it started with Luke consulting, you know, one-on-one -on -one clients. Uh, mm -hmm. our, our client base growing from, you know, two clients to 10 clients mm -hmm. to 50 clients to 100 clients. And where Luke also realized that he has only so much of time in his day. He definitely needs a team to help support him in mm -hmm. what he does. So that's how the whole vision started. It started with Luke. It still is Luke's vision. You know, that's why we call ourselves Team Luke. Um, mm -hmm. And now, of course, we've grown into a robust team. We have about mm -hmm. 140 people that work with us. Okay. Uh, 17 nutritionists. We have back-end support. So from 
you know being being a large company you kind of have to not a large company i mean growing into a larger company from two to two people to maybe 140 people today uh, yeah. you need all of the infrastructure that supports it so mm-hmm. you need an hr team you have um you know you have accounting you have digital you have social media you have your whole recruitment team you have yeah. your finance team so we have a really good support team as well that supports you know us in everything mm-hmm. we do um what we do in terms of our day to day work is of course we have various clients that come to us with their mm-hmm. physical conditions uh we try to support them in the best way possible mm-hmm. a lot of people think that we are an alternative source of medication where we say no you don't need to take your medication you only need to do a nutrition plan and that's not really what we do mm-hmm. in fact a lot of what we do is to support them with their existing medication so if somebody is on medication for a particular reason they need to be on it for whatever reasons are required so we support them in you know uh, by focusing on what we call our four pillars of health where we also simultaneously say that other than that first is let's get to what the root cause of your issue is because so, um my understanding the root cause we might be able to help them not just feel better temporarily but to get rid of that issue as well and then we focus on the four pillars of health which is sleep exercise emotional wellbeing mm-hmm. and of course your you know your your um, uh, your emotional state of mind as well right and it's very nice and your food and your food of course it's very nice to see all these things coming under one roof so uh, all the very best yeah. for all its uh, future ventures um let's see how that goes. and also on your profile i saw that you were once a soft skills trainer so what have been your major right. from being that uh being a soft skills trainer you know is is very interesting because although you have like the same content to deliver every day you know as a trainer you go you go in knowing that okay today i have to deliver content on let's say xyz topic mm-hmm. uh, but your audience is always different Okay. you know the same, i'm not it's not like i'm delivering the content to the same people every day i'm delivering it to different people and i think that's what is interesting part of being a trainer is where you're constantly trying to make sure your um, you're matching your content to suit your audience you know okay. so that's an interesting part that's one thing i learned with where you know it made me realize that i had to do a lot of research before i go into a classroom it's not like okay i know everything about this so i can just go and start delivering it okay. because you know today today i might have a set of audience that you know i could crack a joke and they may all find really funny tomorrow i may have an audience if i crack the same joke they may all just look at me like what was that yeah. you know so to being able to understand your audience uh doing the relevant research getting sure getting your you know examples in place uh getting your analogies in place mm-hmm. and like i said by doing that you know you expand your own horizon as well because you know if i have to if i have to come up with a new analogy or a new story i have to do my research itself yeah. you know on my own i have to read x amount of books so i think as 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 a profession it definitely you know expands not just what you're training your people on but your knowledge by itself also gets expanded quite a bit so it was an interesting it was an interesting journey you know i started off as an i think that was my first uh, proper job as i call it you know as a trainer uh and uh, i still enjoy uh you know delivering content you know every once in a while i still do a training you know for like some of my team members because it is still fun uh like they say in the training team once a trainer always a trainer so mm-hmm. that's definitely something i still enjoy right because i have been to so many uh, you know soft skills training courses and i think uh, my trainers were really nice so i am sure i can see that in you as well because whenever i go for any program the trainers are always just so nice so it was nice to see your journey on being a soft skills trainer so great job on that ma'am let's move back mm-hmm. into um, lifestyle and wellness so you know in today's <coughs> lifestyle you no know, nightlife is growing and people are eating outside right. and eateries are also growing so based on this perspective how do you think lifestyle will influence health but well, so it's it's all about balance and priorities right i mean um yes there are there are like you said there is a night life that exists that always existed mm-hmm. uh, and i think there's also a time and place for everything you know um for example where i am right now maybe maybe 15 years down the line i could have had a late night i could have slept late and woken up the next day and still mm-hmm. gone to work you know i can't do it right now because i'm not in that place right now so mm-hmm. it's about where you are in life i feel you know i also feel like i said it's about balance and priorities you know if you if you want to have a late night once in a while there's really no harm i mean life is about you know having fun meeting people yeah. do do the things that you like so yeah. if you know um 
if going out makes you happy, if you know eating out going uh, makes you happy, I'm sure everyone can do it as long as, as long as you know they they have a balance of it. They're not overdoing it because the problem the problem occurs is when you do it all the time. So you know that's when it starts taking a toll on either your your sleep or your exercise routine or what you're eating as well. So the idea is to do it in balance. And like I said, it's also about each, each, each individual priority that you have, you know, I mean, right. for me, maybe my priority is to sleep, you know, well, so that I wake up and I'm in a good mood because I have a eight year old that wakes up very early in the morning, full of energy and full of life. And I want to be able to have that energy to match it for her. If I wake up, you know, groggy and sleepy because I haven't slept well, I don't think it's fair for her as well to go yeah. through that. So it's all about each person's priorities and people can enjoy everything that life offers uh, as long as it's in you know balance and moderation i like how you focus at least that's on... yeah, please go ahead yeah that's no that's my that's my my perspective of it too. yeah and i like how your perspective is always inclined you know towards balance and how can we maintain everything together so that's something i'm really appreciating in whatever you're saying right now so great great job on that ma'am um also, uh, when i was seeing your profile obviously it was very large and there were so many you know aspects involved in that so in that i also noticed that you have worked with companies and trained teams in different countries all across the world so yeah. i think that it's in itself is a very big achievement so what gives you the power to keep going on and on always well i um i love having something to do i'm not someone who can just sit idle so one is mm -hmm. um in every aspect and in every field that I've done, you know, from one journey to another, I've always learned new things uh, mm -hmm. and I like keeping myself busy, you know, so it's, it's not really like I need motivation or, you know, I, I need something to keep me going really. As long as I know I have something to look forward to, I have something to do, I have some value to add, you know, it's not mm -hmm. like, oh, I wake up and I do these 10 things every day. Okay. I want to make sure that I am adding value in some way. Uh, I am using my strengths, like I said, to the best mm. of its ability. And it's not like uh, work has to be fun every day. Right. You know, there are days when work can be monotonous. I'm sure even you get tired of interviewing different people. <laughs> Sometimes you wake up and say, oh no, yet another interview. So it's not like it's going to be the same every day. Mm. But, um, you know, uh, as long as I'm busy and I have something to do, I'm happy. Uh, I've always worked from a very young age, so uh, I, I don't like being idle, you know, I like to have like some kind of purpose towards my day, some kind of structure towards uh, what are the things I need to do today. And then I feel like, you know, when the weekend comes, I've earned that rest or I've earned that break and, you know, then I look forward to, you know, doing something fun on the weekend. Mm -hmm. So that's really uh, how I look at it. Uh, and each of, like I said, each of the roles I've played have made yeah. me the person I am today, have yeah. added some kind of... Um, some kind of learnings to my role has mm -hmm. changed me as an individual. So all of those challenges as well that I might have had in the past uh, were definitely things that have helped me become the person I am today. Right. And it's very nice to know that as well, because you had so many things and jot them all together. And here you are standing strong today. So again, very, very happy to know that, ma'am. Uh, let's move on to the advice sector. Being in this industry mm -hmm. for many years, you must be having some advice for people. So what advice do you have for our audience today to help them follow a good life <clears throat> and be healthy? Well, I think my advice to them would be to find what works for them, right? You know, uh, just because there's something that they read. One is, one is there's a lot of information out there. So mm -hmm. I would say what is find a reliable source of information. Okay. So you know when you're seeing information because today people spend their whole day uh, strolling on social media. You can find so much of information. Not all is bad and not all is good either. So finding a reliable source of information is definitely important. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, sorry about that. I think I have a network issue. Yeah. So, um, like I said, finding that reliable source of information is very important. Uh, also, understanding why why you're doing a certain thing. Right. You have to be able to do it for yourself. You know, there can't be like, oh, somebody is doing it, so I'm also going to try. It. Yes. You know, their goal is going to be different from your goal. What is it that you're feeling in your life? What is it that you want to change at the moment that you think you need to do? So, my advice is. I think I don't really personally consider myself an expert to give advice, but I think if I were to do it, it would be, um, you know, find what works for you, find a reliable source that you can go to for information whenever you're in doubt. 
and uh, and be consistent at whatever you do because from, i mean from what i've learned at least in life is that i may have done things but i've only really found results when i've been consistent at something so right. that's the only takeaway i can give people that was definitely some food for thought so great job on that ma'am and let's finish off on a very optimistic note you spoke about team loop so tell us what are the future plans and goals and how do you plan on achieving them oh uh, well there are there are so many things on our plate right now when it comes to team loop so uh, it's very difficult for me to personally talk about it because it's not you know like up and up and things go live on our website we really you know we try to keep that little secrecy mm. uh so we don't really talk about it but basically the few things i think that we have going uh, for us is definitely uh, expanding being able to reach out to different markets so you know mm. we are already you know we already have a global presence but to expand some more uh, globally uh we definitely have a big focus on technology because mm-hmm. you know technology not just when it comes to expansion but i feel like technology also helps our team perform uh, better so uh, you know getting uh, getting technology on board to help us you know uh, become more efficient at what we do make things easier for our team you know automate as much as we can is definitely our focus for i think at least the next 6 months Mm-hmm. and on behalf of ic tales and our entire team we wish you all the very best for all your future plans and i must say that this uh, 20 minute session that both of us were having with uh, i think 9 to 10 questions it was very nice and i learned so many different things so thank you so much for giving us your time and doing this with us today ma'am you know thank you so much eva for having me on this interview